and welcome back to my shop. I'm Rob from Woodsley Summercraft. Now, two months ago, I rough turned a piece of walnut, a piece of uh, walnut crotch that I got from Nate Jenner from Angry Beaver. He's a tree surgeon in the Windsor region. He just took down a tree of mine last week as well, uh, a willow. So I'm hoping to find something in there that I can turn as well in the future. But for now, this bowl has warped, twisted, shrunk and dried but it is not cracked so i'm happy about that so i rough turned it about an inch thick and i applied oil and i microwaved it and gradually over the last two months i've got it down to about 11 percent so what i intend to do now is to uh, finish it so stick around and we'll get this thing finished and hopefully hopefully it's nice we'll see let's see what's in here Okay, so I've got this in a jam chuck, basically. It's jammed against a piece of wood in the back here, and my tailstock is centered into the, uh, into the back of the bowl. So I need to true the tenon up, and true the outside edge up, so that I can get this outside finished, so that I can then turn it around and finish the inside, and then eventually remove the tenon. So what you can see me doing here is mostly using pull cuts. I am, I've got my flute closed and I'm using mostly pull cuts because they're less aggressive. Right now this wood is very warped as I would expect it to be. So the pull cuts, like I said, they're less aggressive until I get it more trued up and then mounted better because right now it's just held with pressure from the tailstock then I get it mounted properly and get some really nice cuts on it but I'm thinking I want to get rid of these bug holes I have a couple of bug holes here there's a small check mark here but a little bit of CA glue will take care of that if it's still there I'm getting lots of tear out right now because my speed is down low so once I get it trued up my speed will come up the tear out will be gone Okay, so I'm going to continue doing pull cuts just until it's trued up and then eventually I can get this thing turned around. Okay. Okay, so on the fly, as I often do, okay, so I've decided that I'm going to leave these uh, insect holes here, there's two of them, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill them with uh, five minute epoxy with the coffee granules. 
So I'll get my epoxy together, 50-50 mix, and uh, add some coffee. Okay, so this bowl now is my basic shape and I fill these two bug activity holes with epoxy with coffee granules. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take light cuts with a scraper just to remove the excess and then I will finish it with probably a, uh, a skew just to kind of get my shape and then uh, get this thing sanded down. So let's just remove this uh, epoxy. Okay, so now I've got most of the epoxy gone. There's a little bit here, but sanding will take care of that. Um, but this kind of highlights the bug activity and uh, makes it a nice uh, a color that will kind of blend in with the walnut once it's uh, received its finish. So now I'm just going to sand it down and then we'll uh, we'll get it turned around. I'm going to, now that this is cleaned up, I'll be able to turn it around and mount this back in the chuck. Uh, a fella last week mentioned on one of my videos, he wanted to see how I rechucked a piece of wood once it was rough cut. So this is basically it. I mount the wood like this with just a, a block of wood behind with some uh, anti-slip cloth, wedge it where I want it with the tailstock chew up the tenon, finish the outside to where I want it, and then I can remount it in my chuck using this tenon to do the inside. And then eventually I'll reverse it again to remove this foot. It's at this point too that I can add um, sanding sealer to, to stiff up the grains and get a really good finish. Okay, so once I get down to about 120 grit with sanding, I usually apply some kind of an oil uh, to wet sand. When I wet sand, I use oil, not water. Um, I just find that it uh, creates a lot less dust, hardly any dust. And uh, I get a nice finish with that. So, also really shows the grain. As soon as you apply some oil, it brings that grain out. You can see what the finished product's going to look like. A lot of character in this piece of wood. Just soak that oil in several coats and then uh, continue sanding from uh, 220 grit down to, I think I have 1500 grit, yeah, down to 1500 grit. And then just keep applying oil as I go. Beautiful piece of wood. You can even apply a little bit of oil to the sandpaper as you uh, as you start sanding. So this piece is going to receive lots of oil before it's finished. But as you can see, there is some early signs of I don't know if you'd call it spalting or rot, but it's rock hard, but it's a different color for sure. And we've got the bug activity now with the coffee granules and the epoxy. And uh, we got some quilting going on right here, which is, which is quite nice right in this section here. Very nice piece of wood. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this thing turned around and we'll finish the inside. And then uh, we're going to get lots of coats of oil on it. Um, and we'll get the foot taken care of. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you now how this was mounted. If you haven't seen this before. So basically the tailstock is, is giving it pressure. And then basically there's a block of wood in the truck in the wormwood screw and a piece of this uh, non-slip material. And it was just pushed up against it and, and that held it good enough. And now to put this back in the lathe, basically I'm using my tenon to go into my chuck jaws. And I just tighten that up in there, give it some pressure. Make sure it's good and tight. And we've got it on slow speed, we'll just give it a quick spin just to make sure it's even because we can adjust it a little bit if it's not if it's not even. That's pretty good. You can see the edge is warped, that's what's moving. But the actual bowl is pretty even. Okay, so I'm just going to use a scraper to get this edge off, get this edge evened up. And then I'll be using my bowl gouge to hollow this bowl out. Okay, so at this point I've now got pretty much a quarter of an inch even all through the bowl. Um, I'm going to apply some sanding sealer and take some really light cuts with my scraper just to get any ridges out. But uh, I'm quite happy with the, uh, the figure that I'm seeing. Uh, there's a small crack there which would have been from the pith originally. Uh, but I filled that with some CA glue and some uh, accelerator. Um, and I think once I start sanding this, the figure's going to be going to be quite nice. Okay, let's see what pops here now when I apply some sanding sealer. Be interesting. A little bit of tear out there, which will go once I get some fine cuts.
Okay, so I'll give that a few minutes to dry and then I'll do some light cuts and then some sanding. Okay, so more coats of, of sanding sealer and then I'm going to start sanding. I'm going to start at 100 grit. It's actually uh, a very fine cut, very smooth already. Uh, a little bit of tear out but not a lot. The 100 grit should take care of that and I'm going to work my way up to 1500 grit. Okay, I'll come back to you when this is sanded and uh, we just got to take care of the foot then. Okay, so it's at this point that I've given it several coats of Danish oil and uh, I've applied some paste wax and buffed that down to a medium shine. It's not too glossy, but it's not too dull either. So what, I what I'm gonna do now is I'll take this off of the chuck. And there's my underside. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this on a waste block and turn the underside down to a nub and then I'll just chisel that nub off. Um, we'll get this finished. So again, I'm going to use my wormwood screw. Got to get that in there, right? That's pretty good. Now I'm going to use this waste block again. This will be the third time I think I've used this waste block. Okay, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the edge off of this waste block so that this bowl sits on there nicely without creating any kind of a mark on here. Then I will be putting some anti-slip cloth on here which will also prevent this from getting marked up. And then I can bring my tailstock up and turn most of this away. Okay, I think what I'm actually going to do is use a square carbide tip and just come in from there.
Okay, so I've now got the tenon removed down to just a nub right there. You can just about make out, I'll get something white behind it. You can just about make out the nub right there. Um, so I'm going to leave that there until I remove this. I've sanded this down to 1500 grit. I'm going to put a couple of small uh, accent lines in the base, close to the edge of the base right here. And then I will burnish them with shavings and then I'll take it off the lathe, remove this nub and completely finish the bottom and this bowl will be, will be done. So I'm going to just bring the speed up a little bit. And just with the nib of my skew, I'm just going to put a couple of small score lines, two small score lines, just as an accent. Maybe a third one. Right there. And you can always get a little bit of shavings and just burnish the edges off of them. Just to get the uh, frayed edges off. That pretty much takes care of that. And uh, I haven't applied any oil to this piece yet, so I'm going to do that. And then I'll be taking it off a lathe and removing this. Okay, so I'm just going to apply a little bit of oil to this. Make sure I get it in those uh, score lines. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off the lathe and remove this nub. And then this dust will just have to clean this up. Okay, I've still got a little bit of a nib there, so I'm just going to take that to the sander, the sanding wheel here. And there it is, part two of Walnut Crotch Figure Bowl, uh, now complete. Um, I reverse chucked it, removed the tenon. So I hope you can see that. I'm gonna put some photographs at the end so you can take a closer look. Now this piece has the epoxy with the coffee granules in it. It's got some beautiful figure in it. Um, what I'm doing with this bowl is I'm gonna auction this for cancer research. Uh, something very near and dear to me, to my family. Um, for several reasons um, so I would really appreciate it if you guys watch this if you would help uh, this cause this terrible disease that so many people suffer from and uh, maybe in the comments below you could uh, bid on this bowl I'm just gonna put the bidding up for one week um, there is a minimum that I want to reach uh, for cancer research, that's where the money's gonna go towards, 100% towards cancer research. I don't want anything for it. Um, other than the satisfaction of knowing that I did something. Okay, 
So here it is, I'll put some photographs at the end. Please like, subscribe, and share the heck out of this video because it's for a good cause, a very good cause. So uh, take care, bye for now.